Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I am doing a, a stitch with me. So I am working on my delightful waltz, which has been charted by Artisy this time. Um, this one is my smaller version. I do have a larger version, which is this one here. It's exactly the same. Um, but this one here is only 242 stitches by 300 and this one is, excuse the colours, it's kind of a bit funny, um, 444 stitches by 550. So the one I'm working on is definitely the smaller one which is this one and I am working on this one on 18 counts. So I'm doing two over one on 18 counts and I'm working on an even weave. So usually I do my videos by just doing an introduction and then I will just put some music on and not talk. But today I thought it would be nice to talk and have an update for you about what's going on. Um, quite a lot has been going on. And I just thought that that would, you know, be better. Sometimes I actually do like to hear people talk and to find out what's going on in their lives and yada, yada, yada. So I have, I spent the morning um, getting some parked threads done. So I didn't have to worry too much about flipping over my work because it's, I've got a light on here as well and it's actually connected. Um, this is what this like yellow thing here is. So that's, the felt so it's actually connected to my work so I didn't really want to be turning it over so what I'll do is I will just um, pop my thread somewhere else and then I will cut it and I will just stitch over it and then completely get it out of the way so today I'm basically going to be stitching in all of these parked threads um, I'm not too sure how long the video will be um, I'm actually working on these two pages here. However, I know these threads, these top ones, have gone in past the second page and they're on the third, but I might as well, as I'm here, I might as well just work them in. But I am only working in this area here. So that's one, one page and this is another page. Um, I'm actually now just going page by page and then I'll come down and do page by page. Originally what I was doing though, was going along the top and you know just working my threads um but then i decided to change my plan and do it page by page so without further ado let's get stuck in right so i hope you can all see that okay um because i'm having to have my camera at the front camera rather than the back camera i don't really have much zoom um well, I don't have a zoom on my camera. So what I will try and do is when I edit this video, I will see if I can sort of zoom in for for the um for you guys so you'll be able to see it better. So So today is Saturday. Um it's so difficult when you actually can't look at your work really close. Normally, I'm I've got my head like over my work, trying to um, find the holes and things, but I don't want to get in the way of the camera. Um, so today is Saturday, so I've had a bit of a a pleasant day today it's not been too bad um, I've had a hectic week um, my tooth broke at the beginning of the week and I had to ring up for an emergency dentist appointment to get because it took half my filling with it to get my filling replaced and my tooth built up again so that was a good 200 pounds and then I've been having real issues with my back. So I saw the osteopath on Thursday and last Thursday. So that's added up. 
and then the month that I'm absolutely skint is the month that my horse's supplements all run out <laughs> so I had to sort of pay to replenish them as well so it's been a rather expensive month but yeah so I I did some stitching this morning um, on this one and the plan was to get it to 8% and I'm at 8.37 which is good um, and because I've got to just pop all these park threads in I thought that I would do a stitch with me and talk um, yeah so I did some stitching this morning um, some washing you know boring stuff and then I got a text from one of my neighbours who lives like seven well basically down a different road to me um, because my cat came in without his GPS collar over Christmas time and so I went looking for it because the good thing about a GPS is that it will tell you like the last location and it hadn't moved so I knew by that time that it was not on my my cat and so I went looking for it and I couldn't find it and the owner of the house came out and um you know I did knock on the door but he didn't answer I think he was busy at the time but he came out and he's like are you okay and I said yeah because obviously I was looking sort of around his garden I did speak to his next door neighbor just to say look this is what's happened um would it be okay if I just because it's, it's actually not in his garden it's in like a front parking area that's got some shrubbery and bushes and things so I said to his neck I said to the next door neighbor is it okay if I just um you know just have a look around to see if I can find it and he was like yeah yeah they're really nice I said okay that's great um but he had a nice big Porsche parked in the front so I'm assuming that they were there but anyway his wife was out doing the gardening and he was must have been inside the office doing some work anyway he came out and he was like you okay I, I explained the situation that my cat lost its collar and this is the known place um and I want to try and find the GPS because they're not cheap. And we had a look, both of us, and we couldn't find it, which is a bit odd. And then today, I mean, that was like after Christmas. Um, today I get a text from him saying, oh, hi, Hall. Um, just to let you know, my wife found your cat's collar. Um, come and collect it whenever you want. So I was like, okay, fine, great, thanks. Just leave it outside my doorstep and then I'm not going to disturb you. I can just come and collect it as and when so I did that on the way back from my horse um, went to the yard I did some stitching then went to the yard about half past two um, I ride with another lady she's not very confident on a horse and as much as my horse is a psycho with me um, actually she's quite sensible in a, an arena setting she's not very spooky um, unless there's a puddle, she doesn't like puddles. So she comes and rides in with me with her horse. So now we kind of make it a, a sort of a, a weekend routine now. Like every weekend we book the school for 3 pm. Um, you know, we make it a social event and it's nice. But I am really, really struggling with not seeing my horse every day. I, I mean, I've never done drugs, but I can imagine how people feel you know when they've got that addiction and they need that buzz um because my horse is my addiction she's like my life she's everything and i really struggle when i don't see her um you know i'm paying all this money for her to be in full board um and it's almost, I feel like it's pointless. It's something that I'm paying someone else to do that I could do. But because, you know, I'm back doing a nine to five job. Well, I work till from eight till half four. Um, you know, I don't get to see her in the morning. So I'm on the road at seven o'clock. And it's just difficult, really, really difficult. And in the evening, you know, I'm not back until half past five because it takes me 40 minutes to get to work in the morning. And then it takes me over an hour to get back because traffic is awful. And I'm just not enjoying my life right now. I just, I can't explain it. I'm just so, not depressed. I mean, like, you know, there's 
I don't have an issue um, with um, with feeling like that. I just think, um, you know, I've I haven't had an office job for about ten years, and there's a reason why I got out of working in an office in the first place and now I just feel like I'm just right back where I started now I know it's all for a good cause and you know I'm just winding the coil as my osteopath says um, but you know it's still still difficult but it was freezing down the yard today I think when I left here it was minus three which is uh, 26 degrees Fahrenheit absolutely baltic but you know when well i say when you ride you you know you expend energy by riding but because she's just come back into work after having pretty much six months off uh and i only get to ride her on the weekends which is really really rubbish i tend to sort of walk her on the saturday and then i'll do a little bit more work with her on the sunday maybe do a bit of trotting but you know i don't want to do too much, you don't want to stress her joints too much. Um, but she feels like she really needs the extra work. Um, she feels like a bit of elastic that's going to ping at any moment. And, you know, she's been on the same food. I haven't cut her food down because it's winter. So you're basically feeding horse the same energy. The energy's going in, but it's not being used to the other end. It's just you know, being stored. And then when she gets out to the arena, she can be a bit of a basket case, she get a bit excited, but hey ho. She's never boring, as people say, she's never boring. But yeah, so I just feel like I've hit a wall. You know, I'm so ready to start my new life. I'm so ready to get out of this country. I'm so ready to have my horse at home, I'm so ready to be able to ride every day. Um, so we have got the design of the stables back, the drawing for that, which is really exciting. Um, and then I've spoken to my builder about getting an RV and then renovating it. So that's quite exciting. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that with my dad. Hopefully he'll be able to come out and work won't be too stressful for him. But yeah, just anxious to start now, just anxious to get going really. Um, so my plan for this one is I've I've done a week schedule. Well no, actually I've done a schedule for the whole month. And I put myself down as working on this today, all day, and tomorrow in the morning, and then in the evening will be the rest of my alternative reality, because I've just got a few more stitches to do on that one to reach my 12%, and then I can put that away. Um, but I'm glad that I have reached my target of 8%, but it's good that I'm carrying on, because, you know, I would like to get, you know, a lot more... And I, I did, um, you know, I achieved that 8% quite quickly. So I'm thinking maybe that wasn't a big enough, um, what do you call it? Got my head gone. Goal, should I say. It wasn't a big enough goal to hit. So I might re-look at that next time I'd set my goals. But... <laughs> But other than that, nothing much really is going on. <sighs> My cat has come in, so you might hear him. He acts practically starved all the time. I mean, obviously I don't starve my cat, but, you know, he acts like he's starved. And I can't find my scissors anywhere. Where have I put my scissors? Oh, this could be a nightmare. Normally, oh, yeah, I'm saying normally I'm sat on them and I am sat on them. Okay, so that's ready to be stitched in. 
when that's done. I quite like stitching in threads. So on this one, I started off with doing, going across and finding, you know, a symbol and then working the symbol in. But actually, um, I quite like doing an area and parking stitches, parking my threads. Um, a, because it makes my look, my work look really, really neat. And B, because I like actually then just working my stitches in. Right, so that is that one. Stitches, uh, threads in. I don't know why I keep saying stitches. I like going back and working in my threads. Um, so you go from like a hot mess to something that looks really neat and organised and much better and my tummy's rumbling and I'm really sorry about that. I did have some hummus and pita bread, like a whole wheat pita bread, before I did this video because it's still early here, it's only half six. So it's not, for me, it's not time for dinner yet. And I don't like eating too early because I do find that if I eat too early, then I'm hungry by sort of four o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning, depending on what time I've gone to bed. And and it wakes me up. I'm very food orientated. So I have to eat quite late just so I don't feel hungry in the day, in the day, in the night, on oh my days. I'm going mad. But yeah, really excited about the stables, really excited that I feel like we're moving forward, which is grand. Shipping, ugh, oh my days. So I've been quoted £12,000 for shipping. Now I fully appreciate and understand that, you know, COVID's taken a, a toll on everyone, but £12,000 really? It's incredible. So when I phoned them up, I was like, so where has that sort of quote come from? And they're like, oh yeah, you know, it was a COVID pandemic. And I, you know, I don't mean to to sound like this but I think a lot of the times people just use that as an excuse to hike their prices up oh yeah it's a pandemic so everything's three four times expensive and I don't feel like they need to do that and then when I actually went into it in more detail he said oh well um there's a lack of containers like a massive lack of containers and I was like oh okay so what I did then is I went onto another website um that sold containers Because I thought, okay, well, what I'll do then is I'll buy a container and then I'll ship my stuff and I'll do it myself. So I said to him, like, you know, how, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me, how much are containers? And he was like, oh, so a used one's about £2,000 and a uh, new one's about 2500 And I was like, right, okay, so um, given that there's a shortage of containers, what is your delivery time on that? And he was like, what do you mean? I said, well... You know, I've been told by a shipping container, a uh, shipping company, that and there's a massive shortage of containers. And he's like, no, there's loads of containers. They're just they're sat on docks, not being used. Um, so that was a lie, you know. And I just feel sometimes that people are just using the pandemic as an excuse um, to like massively hike their prices up. Now I do appreciate that you know when it comes down to people you are going to have people off you know with covid that are ill so you're going to have a lack of um bodies doing the work you know i appreciate that but then just to tell me that there's no containers um because that was the other thing i said to him so what's what's your turnaround then thinking oh it'd be like six months and he's like oh well we can pick your stuff up next week and i was like how are you going to get hold of the containers and he's like oh we've got containers I was like, right, so there's not a shortage then, is there? Mm, honestly. But I worry because all my household items are coming from um, the UK. So basically, I've got, I'm just literally taking my, the items that I need to take. So my personal belongings. A lot of my books and things that I can actually just buy again. Um, I'm just going to take to a charity uh, charity shop but my um, Harry Potter are coming with me my planners are coming with me and my um, Penguin Classic collection they're coming with me as well um, and I've got some like lots of other personal bits pictures and things like that they're coming with me but you know anything I can send to a charity shop that they can 
sell you know to get some money then i'll definitely do that because there's just no point i'm gonna i've got hiccups excuse me i'm gonna take as like the minimum amount of stuff that i i you know i can take um but yeah so but on top of that when my house eventually is built because i don't know when it's going to be built now um but th the problem with the house being built well it's not a problem with that being built but the problem is is that i can only live in the rv for um six months so i have to have a permit to live in my rv on my land and they only give you a permit for six months and if you want longer then you have to prove that you're building your house which is fine because i can start the foundations and then what they do is it kind of gets sort of renewed for another six months or whatever but um you know it is a bit of a nightmare however it kind of works in my favor because dad bless him i love my dad a bit but he said he would help me with the house now if there was kind of any way that i could live in that rv continuously permanently then he wouldn't need to help me build a house because he would just say, well, well, you don't need a lot of space. You haven't got kids. You haven't got family. Just live in the RV, which is great. But I want to live in an RV for the rest of my life. I mean, I've got two cats and I want to get, you know, a dog and it's just not practical. So it kind of, it is kind of in my, in my favour that they are like that. And, um, you know, it, it does definitely work in my favour. We're trying to actually get the house built um but yeah so once it's built i really really would like my furniture to come from the uk because i love my sort of my uh style is farmhouse a modern farmhouse i love that um and i've seen some really beautiful oak furniture here that i can sort of do my whole entire house in so the whole every single room matches um with the same furniture <laughs> And um, I have, believe me, I have searched the States because so many people said, I'll oh, just buy you furniture in the States. Don't bother shipping anything out. But I, I just, for me, um, the furniture in the States, as much as it's absolutely lovely, it's just not my taste. Um, I'm not really an opulent person and it's very big and opulent and grand and, you know, I think if you've grown up with that, then that's great. But I've grown up with sort of, you know, oak, country oak furniture. And that's my style. That's my love. In fact, my stables, because I am buying the lumber in the US, I've decided to stain all the lumber um, a light oak colour. So everything matches and they will absolutely look gorgeous. And I literally cannot wait. So that'll be fun for me. Um, so what will be even more fun is trying to get my horse out there but I'm sure she'll be fine I mean they deal with stallions that have never travelled before that are like 17 two, 17 three hands and have got a serious amount of energy and oomph behind them so I'm sure they can bundle my mare into a plane if they need to but yeah I don't know why, but my nose is really running. I was so cold today when I came back from the yard. And um, we call it a yard in, the, in England, even though a yard in the States is a like a garden, a backyard. Um, so if you get a bit lost with my terminology, I know that I've got a lot of beautiful American people on my um, floss tube. So I will try and translate. Um, so if I say yard, I mean barn. <laughs> um so yeah, it was freezing down there today and I got home I made sure I put the heating on before I left so that the house was warm. We live in a, I say we, I, uh, my ex is still here funnily enough. I broke up with my ex back in the summer but we still live together. It's a bit awkward but, you know, we've got separate lives. He works in Reading. Um, I work an everyday nine to five job. He's hardly ever here on his days off. He's tinkering on his bike. On my days off, I'm riding my horse so... Although we live together, we're, we've, we've got separate rooms, pretty much separate lives. Um, and I've completely forgotten what I was going to say now. Oh yeah, so when I left today, I put the heating on so I knew that it was going to be nice and warm when I got back. 
because I was so, so cold. Um, and I just couldn't get warm. I couldn't get warm at all. So I had a shower to try and get warm, but oh, shower. Oh yeah, so what I was saying is our ha my house is in 1800s, year 1800. So the walls are like two foot thick. So in the summer, it's really cool actually. It's a nice, cool place. But in the winter, it is Baltically freezing. I mean, I can't even explain to you how cold this place is in the winter. It is for beyond freezing. But the heating is actually relatively good. So if you throw it on for like a few hours, by the time you get home, it's nice and toasty. But anyway, um, so I did that, then went to the yard and I was so cold that I had a shower and the shower is rubbish. Like literally, we haven't got a dishwasher. The shower is like a drip, drip, drip shower. It's not overly hot. Um, but I just couldn't get warm. So what I did is I put the plug in my bath and then I put the tap on as well, the hot tap, just the hot tap. And I kind of filled the bath with the hot tap and the running water from the shower. And then halfway through my shower, um, I just sort of laid down on the bath because I was Baltically freezing and it didn't, it took until that I got out and dried my hair and then had to put a another heater on I've got like a blow heater in my in my room to just you know get me warm again because I was absolutely freezing but I feel okay now I just hate being cold I'm just not a cold person I really struggle with being cold it's probably one of the reasons why I want to move to Georgia because it doesn't have you know the winters like we have I mean it's January not even half oh, are we halfway through Jan what are we, 15th to 30, yeah, so we're pretty much bang on halfway through, and, one, two, three, four, and it's minus three already, and I find that February is like the coldest month in the UK, and that's when we get our snow, um, that's also when we get flooded out every single year as well, in February, but, yeah, so I, I am digging going to a nice hot country three, one, two, three. and don't get me wrong I know it gets hot I was over there one summer and it was like the hottest summer on record it was like 105 106 degrees and actually once your body acclimates to it and your body gets used to sweating because we don't really sweat in the UK because it just doesn't get hot enough um then absolutely everything is fine um and I felt fine. I even remember like mucking out at like two o'clock in the afternoon thinking, do you know what? Yeah, I can do with this heat. It's not a problem at all. Yes, it gets a bit humid. Um, but everything's air conditioned in the States. Remember, like here, we don't have air conditioning unless you actually physically put it in your house. Um, we don't have air conditioning as a as a rule. So when it's when it is baking hot in the UK, which is not very often, but when it is, Oh, it is horrible. But that blow f heater that I've got has also got a, you know, a cooler setting. So I'll just sit with that. Or I'll lay in bed with that on my face. I love having air blowing in my face. It's lovely. Um, let's get rid of this. Get rid of that. Sorry, I'm marking off pattern keeper as we go, so I don't myself lost. Um, yeah, so I feel like I've got a bit of a cold from the knock-on effects of being freezing cold in the house and at the yard. But my mare was pleased to see me. She always, you know, whinnies when she can hear me or my car, which is really lovely. I always get, you know, I always think that if she was human that she would be that person that would welcome me with open arms. Um, she's just gorgeous. One, two, one, two, three. And I'm so lucky to have her. Like, I'm so lucky that we found each other. I rescued her. Um, she wasn't in a very good state. She was starved. So that's what makes her really angst, angsty over her food now. She's so protective. Like if I if I'm got if I've got treats in my pocket and she knows I have because she's not stupid, and another horse um, pokes its head over its stable to try and you know persuade me to give it treats, she goes like batshit crazy. You know, ears back. She launches herself, 
And even just on a, even if there's no food, still, like, if a horse comes, if I go in the field and a horse comes near me, she'll come galloping over and she'll just, I don't know whether it's like a protection mechanism or what, but she just puts her bum to all the other horses and just says, like, you know, back off. Warning, back away. That's my mum. Um, and I don't know whether she's doing it because she's being protective or she's just doing it because she's just wants to be a genuine pain in the bum. But it was quite nice. I tell you what, I did do once in one summer, but this was absolutely lovely. So I, I remember it was really, really hot summer one day and I went about... I went to the yard about seven o'clock when the sun started setting because sometimes I just like going down in, you know, because they live out at night. Sometimes I like just going down the yard and sitting in the field with her with my book and just, you know, having her eating and just being there. And the first time I did this, I laid down on the floor just to get a bit of sun first. And she came and galloping over and I I don't know she was just like literally face was all over me you know she was nudging me with her head and I don't know whether she thought that I might have been injured or thought that I was not okay um but I was fine but she just stood there she stood over me um the whole time that I was I was lying down I just wanted to get a bit of sun so I did sort of get up and then I laid back down again and she didn't leave my side and a horse came up to kind of inquire what was going on and she went for it like she proper pelted at it she I mean she didn't rear up and, and you know knock it out with her feet she just gave it a massive warning as to say like back off and she just stood there she just stood over me I, I'm almost a little bit like I don't know if anyone's ever seen you know fo foals in the field what you find is that if you've got mares and you've got a few foals. Whilst the foals are um, asleep, the mares will just sit, will just make a circle. And it's an innate thing. It's just a protective thing that whilst they are sleeping, they are protecting them. Um, hang on. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's good then, isn't it? Oh, have I done that right? Um... Oh yeah, um, yeah. It's a protective mechanism. So they just they circle the foals, so they just keep them protected from any um, outside predators. And it's actually quite amazing to to watch. Nature is just stunning. And I think that's just basically what she was doing with me, just being protective. But so we do have a strong bond. We really do. I she gets grouchy when I put her rug on, you know, ears back, and she goes to like nibble, nip me. But I just have to look at her and she's like, <laughs> okay. Um, but I just, I couldn't imagine my life without her, so. She is being flown to the United States of America. I mean, she has no idea how lucky she is. She's going to live a new life in a new place. And then hopefully we'll be able to pop her into fall because I'm so desperate to have one of her babies. Um, and she'll be a great mum. I mean, I've seen her down the down the field when there's been, you know, foals nearby, and she's always really inquisitive. She's a good girl. should have bought a drink up really doing all this talking I really struggle with the dried throat when I've been talking too much okay so is there any more of those in the vicinity mm. not really my nose right okay so and um, I can bring that over here and stick that in there yep 
Yeah, I'm uh, I'm quite apprehensive about the whole move. I've got some stuff in lockup, which my dad's got some stuff in the lockup as well. Um, we I found out, and I didn't know this, but I found out when I spoke to the shipping guys that you can't mix you know your cargo so basically my business has been set up and i've got an ein i've got a website and everything it's all um above board and it's registered with the state um and uh so when my stables go over because they're a commercial entity they are for my business the customs all the customers information is going to be uh, in my business's name so my business basically will be um, receiving the goods and um, I didn't know that I mean I'm, I guess it's just stupid of me to not realize but you know if you're not in that trade then you're not gonna I thought that I've got some a few things to you know take over that is personal so like maybe sort of five or ten boxes including my dad's stuff and that when we get to Monarch, which is where we're buying the stables, I was going to drive up there with a van, with my boxes, and I was just going to... Because we've got a container anyway, and we're paying for delivery, paying for shipping, we might as well just chuck in some of our stuff, like, at the end. Uh, no, you're not allowed to do that, because if it's a commercial shipment, um, and, you know, it's going by ship, there there are strict rules with, you know, having a separate container for like domestic personal stuff and a, a separate container for commercial which I knew nothing about so on top of the shipping that we've got to pay for for my business and my stables I've now got to find some money for shipping my personal belongings oh, it's just one thing after another it feels like it's one thing after another um but now I'm really nervous about how to go about that I mean, part of me says, just get everything out of lockup, just get everything out of the spare room, purge what you're going to purge to a, uh, um, what do you call it, a charity shop, and then take and box what else you're going to take, you know, to the States with you, and just get a company to come in, grab your boxes, and, and take it. It's literally as simple as that. It's not actually hard. In fact, I think some of the companies actually do all the packing themselves so if you so if i was to sort of get rid of everything i wasn't going to take put everything i was going to take in a room and then they can just pack it because i think sometimes for insurance purposes they like to um to pack it anyway themselves so i thought well okay well that's that's kind of a good idea really um what is that there Is that that one? Okay. Yeah, all right, I'll just chop that then. So that one's done. That one's done. Go into this one. I feel like I've lost myself on Pattern Keeper. Um, okay, is that it? Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm wasting so much floss. Hey ho. I have got a couple of new starts that I am planning, so I can talk you through those. It's exciting. So I'm doing whip go. And one of my whip goes was, so number two was alternative reality. So I'm going to finish that off tomorrow to get my 12%. And then the other one was work on, on Bountiful Bookshelf for a whole week, which I've done. So I think my, uh, I can actually tell you now. So my percentage that I wanted to get on Bountiful Bookshelf was 3.50 and I've got 3.57 now given the fact that I've got 713,000 stitches in that project that's not bad going um so yeah so I've done that and so I've got in my month 
plant that I got another long dog sampler that I bought, which I absolutely love, called Crossword, which is K-R-O-Z-W-Y-R-D. And I'm doing that in um, two colours and on like a grey fabric, which is gorgeous. And then the other one I'm starting is Stormy. And I have already dyed my thread, not dyed my thread, dyed my fabric for that. So I've got my own homegrown fabric. And the one after that, because I started, started, I'm starting three. So I go into year 2022 with 22 whips. Um, and that one is King Henry VIII. Uh, and I'm going to do that on 18 count because they look, it looks really exciting. I'm so excited to start those. I think Stormy will look amazing on my fabric. Okay, so what's this green one here? Mm. What color is it? That's definitely not 3761, is it? Or is it? Stick my needle down. I don't know where my needle miter is for this. 3761. Oh, um. 3761. Okay, maybe that is that then. Fair enough. So far today, my stitch count is 373 stitches. So I'm gonna try and to, I'm gonna try and get to 500. That's my goal. But after I've done this video, I'm gonna have to eat something. So I'll probably put food on. And my food tonight is chicken and rice, but it doesn't, it's not actually as boring as it sounds. So I've got a sauce, which is called chicken tonight, and it's a honey and mustard sauce. It's really nice and creamy, probably really fattening for you, but you know, I've got chicken as well. And actually I buy cooked chicken, like a cooked chicken thigh, um, because I find that it's more succulent than cooking chicken yourself. I find sometimes when you buy raw chicken and cook it, I find sometimes it's really dry so I'm having that tonight with loads and loads of broccoli I love broccoli um, broccoli is like my favorite vegetable in the world so I tend to eat stacks of that which is interesting because a, a while back I had a blood test and my doctor said that I was not I didn't have very good iron and I was thinking wow okay so I probably have broccoli like three or three yeah about three times a week and for him to say, oh, um, I need to have some like iron tablets, I was quite shocked. I thought there was quite a lot of iron in broccoli, but maybe there isn't. Or maybe just the amount that I'm eating. There isn't. But actually, I quite like munching on raw broccoli as well. And I've got, I think I've got some Stilton in the fridge. So I was thinking of also doing some broccoli and Stilton soup. So, sort of trying to find a recipe for that. I've got Mary Berry's book. She's a phenomenal bake and cook. Baker and cook. So, we'll see what she has to say for herself for a, a broccoli and Stilton soup. And then maybe I can make enough and then I can take it to work. Because we've got a microwave at work. Um, but yeah, I'm just, just going back to work. I'm, I think what I'm really, really struggling with at the moment is... I'm in prison. And that's what it feels like. Hang on, I'm just going to stretch my leg. So I leave the house at seven o'clock in the morning. It's pitch black outside. I leave work at half past four and it's dark outside. And we haven't really got windows. They're quite high up. So you don't, although we get the, you know, the sun coming through the window, you don't actually see outside the window. So I just feel like I'm in prison because for a whole entire week, you know, from Monday to Friday, I don't see sunlight. And that sounds crazy, but I, I just don't. Um, that should be another one there. Bear with, I just need to... Um, get rid of that. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't see sunlight at all, and I am really struggling with that. I'm really struggling with you know, living in darkness. And I know there are some places in the world that 
don't get light and the same place then doesn't get dark so it doesn't get light for six months and then it doesn't get dark for six months which is very very odd so I just I couldn't imagine living somewhere like that I even even though um you know what is lovely though when I drive to work at seven o'clock in the morning I meet some beautiful beautiful sunsets and they are always you know worth you know being up for so when the sunset sun rises on oh my days i can't even talk i can't think you know i really struggle with doing more than one thing at a time i struggle with um breathing and talking and trying to think so um yeah so sunrise so i get because it's dark when i leave i get the sunrise and by the time i get to work the sun is well it's pretty much almost up so that's really special so i get to drive into uh, the sunrise because i think i'm i think i pretty much go to due east um so that's really lovely and I do enjoy that I do think that my trip to work is beautiful in the morning because of that and I do take full advantage of it and I do love being up at that time and on the road at that time um oh, that's the wrong place but you know the flip side of that is that other than Saturday or Sunday I don't see daylight and I'm just really struggling with that Hang on a minute. Okay, I've got this wrong. Um, okay. okay, there needs to be another line of green in there, which is why I'm getting so confused. So I balled up but I don't really care because I mean look at it, it's confetti heavy and there's like colour everywhere so it doesn't really matter. I'll just forge it. Um I'm just gonna take this out. But I do try and make sure that you know I'm as correct as can be. This just needs to go up a bit. Um, so yeah, so that, that's why I'm really, really, really looking forward to getting out of the UK. Um, okay, so if that is, I need another set there. Sorry, bear with, I'm just going to talk to myself for a minute. so that needs to go there then that's fine it's fine all is not lost sometimes you just need to improvise but you know what it becomes your piece of work then doesn't it it's not a true copy um oh my days that's not right either Oh yeah, yeah it is. Cause, cause that's wrong. Okay, that's fine. Right, so that's. Oh, what are you doing, woman? <laughs> Whose idea was it to do a stitch with me? So I'm very, very excited about going to the States in the springtime. I think we're aiming for March, which is beautiful because March is like, March, April is, well, April, May is my favourite time of the year, purely because it's springtime and spring for me is new beginnings, new starts, fresh starts, flowers, daffodils, sunshine, and I just absolutely love it. So I am very much looking forward to starting my life in the States. Just thankfully though, a good thing is because it's taken so blooming long to get there, visa processing time is now about six months instead of a year. And um, that's encouraging. Because uh, I want to do everything completely above board and legal. Um, especially if I'm going to go to the 
um, especially if I'm going to go and get my horse delivered to the States, you know, it's costing 13 grand in pounds, so that's even more in dollars, about 15 grand in dollars, and um, I don't want to have to bring her back. My cats are different, you know, I can bung them in a plane, and as long as they're together, they're not too bad, and they don't cause me too many issues, and actually they're about 1,200 quid, and so I could quite easily, if I wanted to, just bring my cats back. Um, not that I want to do that. I don't, you know, once I get out there and get my visa, I don't want to be worried about, um, you know, having to come back and things like that. So, um, and I certainly don't want to be worrying about getting my horse back. So I want to make sure that everything's above board and being signed off and, you know, lawyers are happy and embassies are happy and um, everyone is happy. And then we can start the business properly. Say so we. When I say we, I mean me and my dad. Because my dad's heavily involved in this. He wants to make stuff. Which is great, you know. He's in construction, but he's not in... Um, He's very high up in construction. He's a consultant now in the Middle East. Um, so he is, like, on ridiculous money. What he charges per per day. Um but he said that he, do, he he physically doesn't make anything and, and he wants to be involved with his, you know, in, involved and he wants to use his hands and he wants to make things. And, you know, outside the stables, I wasn't going to. But because I've got a 16 foot gap between one stable and the other, I decided that I'm going to have like four foot by two foot or four foot by three foot boxes made that are, um, you know, wooden boxes that are kind of a flip up. I don't know if you can see that. And they all go outside everyone's stable so that if they're going to be grooming their horse or doing anything with their horse or bandaging their horse, these are things that they can have with them outside their stable. Because um, there's nothing worse than having to keep going back into the tack room, especially if you're on one of the end stables and the tack room is in the middle and you're quite far away. So I decided that it'd be a good idea to have boxes outside the stables. Everyone has, has their own. And these are things that my dad can get involved with and start making. And actually, I can probably make as well. And, you know, we can engrave them. And, you know, I don't know. We can just, you know, have fun and have fun and, and you know, keep our relationship going. Because I've got a really good um, relationship with my dad. He's like my idol. I'm so lucky to have my dad as my dad. He's just... Oh, I don't know. I mean, a classic example was I had such a bad week last week that I just, you know, I the stables keep going up in price in my quotes because just everything is like doubling. I just feel like it's bacteria, you know, it's multiplying constantly and I just can't, I feel like I can't, I can't get a handle on it. And, um, oh, what's happened there then? Oh, brilliant. Okay, let's undo that then and start again. That's fine. Um, I feel like I can't get a handle on it. And as soon as I get quoted one price and then something comes up and we can't pay for stables then and there and like, you know, a few months go past and it's like, okay, well, let's get another quote. It's gone up again. And I just, it's, I just feel like it's, um, you know, going out of control. And I can't seem to say to them, like, you know, can't I just pay some kind of deposit to kind of almost get a, a price, um like a price freeze um and they they don't really do that and i do get that things are going up but oh it's just a nightmare so when i got the last quote for the stables and it came out like 50 grand honestly i almost fell out of my chair and most of that is because the, well the shipping is so expensive the shipping was 12 grand and so i had a real bad week and i sent to my dad i sent my dad an email i said look do you know what um we might as well just quit while we're ahead. Um, you know, let's just sell the land and, and get out because I can't do this any more emotionally, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, I can't deal with everything going up in price and, you know, us not being able to afford it because the goalpost keeps moving. You know, every time things go up, we've then got to try and find some extra money and it, we haven't got it on, on trees. You know, we haven't got a lot of money. Everything we've got, we've saved. Um, so anyway, I got this email from my dad saying, um, don't give up whole, we'll make it work. 
you know, um, it will it will work out. We'll we'll make it work. You know, whatever we have to do, we'll make it work. And that's the type of person my dad is. You know, he knows I'm not having a bad day. And instead of going, oh well, how ungrateful are you? You know, I'm working my butt, you know, my backside off to try and make this work for you. And then you send me an email like that saying you want to just pack it all in. He knows me, a hundred percent knows me, and he knows that. All I need is, is just a little bit of encouragement to kind of almost get back on the on the wagon because I felt like I'd fallen off it. Bearing in mind, though, I know I probably am coming across like um, a snobby, ungrateful cow. I'm not at all. This has been going on for about 10 years. 10 years I've been trying to get out to the States to set this business up, and it's been one thing after another. So I, I think everyone has got their, their points, their time in which they're like, oh, my days, I'm just so done, I can't you know, can't do this. Um, and I really, I genuinely felt like I was hitting my, my head against a brick wall and, you know, I'd go to dad and, and say like, you know, the stables are like coming out of this price. And dad's like, well, you know, we can't afford that. Something's got to give, you know, we've either got to make, you know, effort somewhere else, or like, we've got to change the design or we've got to have less stables or let's just, I mean, I love my dad to death, but he was coming out with crazy ideas. Like let's build half the barn. Um, and I, I get that, but the thing is, is that, you know, my, with my E2 investment visa, which is the visa I'm going for, I have to have a business plan that is overseen by a CPA and, and the CPAs, um, that work in the embassy, if they don't feel like your business is profitable, they don't feel that you are making enough because you have to bring in, you have to show that you're bringing in a substantial income. Now, everyone knows that most businesses are, you know, at a loss for like the first 18 months. You have got no chance of making a loss in 18 months because the visa, I think it's I-94 or something, is I think the first visa you get is for two years, then you've got to renew it. And then after that is five years. If you are not showing a, a considerable profit in that two years, then they're not renewing your visa. Um, so, you know, it is really, really substantial that we have the stable numbers so that, you know, we have access to the numbers that we need. Now, what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to get into a situation where we'd had half the, bar the barn built, which we're not going to be able to anyway, because on our business plan, we wouldn't be showing enough profit. But anyway, having half the business, um, half the barn built... And then, um, then dad saying, okay, so, you know, the, the business has been bringing in some more money. Okay. Let's now get the other half of the stables and there'd be like, cause it takes about eight weeks for them to fabricate them. Mind they, they don't, they don't have them just hanging on shelves. They have to make them to order. So then there was that, that, you know, I, uh, that we potentially just do half of them and then like when we've sort of got some money we do the other half now um that works if it's your own stables now what i mean by that is if you're not renting these stables out or you're not giving someone a service and they're just your stables and you can deal with all the you know workmanship going around and the clattering of you know this that and the other then great but I'm telling you now, if I was in a boarding facility and I had a stable and then the other half of the yard was just being, you know, all I had was just bang, 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 you know, banging the nails, doing this, doing that. Um, I wouldn't be too happy about it, to be honest. It's not something that, you know, I really want my horse going through either. You know, stable time for her is rest time. And if she can't rest because there's people next door that are smashing in nails and taking things off and, you know, doing whatever... It's just not practical. And then the other side of it is what happens if, you know, I don't know, something happens. They've got, you know, four of their guys off with COVID, for example. Um, oh, hang on. And they can't get the stables or that there is something really serious with the shipping and like there are no containers. And or if there are containers, you know, and the ships go over and then they're delayed and there's no one to move them onto your land or, you know, transport them. I think they're going to Savannah. From Savannah to, like, where I am. And and they just sit on in the port at $250 a day. 
you know, a couple of weeks of that, you're looking at a couple of grand and that's a lot of money on top of, you know, the 12 grand that you're already paying. So I said to my dad, look, I mean, I don't want to be in a position where I am turning away business because I'm not ready. And I've got a feeling that we are going to be hitting, like literally hitting the ground running. I am very happy if people, you know, if people want to come in early before we're even built, you know, finish, should I say, if people are desperate to move and they need to move and they don't mind, um, you know, coming in and work going on around them, I'm absolutely happy with them doing that. And, you know, if we need to stop work because they want to ride in the arena and don't want to get distracted, then fine. But what I'm not doing is I'm not advertising my business when it's not finished. Um, <clears throat> so he kind of he kind of got that. Um, but this is this is like what I'm with my dad not being a horsey horsey person and you know i can't it's just it's he's just not a horsey person what can i say it's not his his bag um you know he obviously doesn't understand these things but you know he's an amazing guy but sometimes his ideas can be a little bit um eccentric i do definitely call him eccentric my dad is eccentric but you know he's bloody brilliant and he's very intelligent and he wouldn't be the person he was if he wasn't a little bit eccentric and actually I think I'm a bit eccentric um so yeah so that's kind of where we are I'm just kind of cut that so it's been a lot of stress um where is that uh, it's up there. there we are um, but then like my osteopath says as well, like no pain, no gain, you know, it wouldn't be the same if this was easy, you know, if it was easy and everything just fell into place, I wouldn't appreciate it as much. And, you know, he's so right. I do appreciate absolutely everything. But on the other hand, like the amount of times that I've gone back to the drawing board and designed and redesigned and redesigned again, like the stable yard to try and get it to fit in with our budget and things like that is just unbelievable i'm just so done with designing my barn now i just want <laughs> to just get it done so what we've decided is that um we're buying my okay so we can afford the top of the range stables okay which were beautiful but we didn't really want to get like the lower lower range because they weren't nice at all. I mean, they're okay, they're practical, but I just wanted something that was a little bit like, oh, wow. You know, people walked into the yard and they were like, oh, wow, this is lovely. So what we've decided is that Dad is going to buy the stable dividers and the stable fronts. And I am going to buy the extras. So by that, I mean, I need two tack room doors, well, one for the feed room and one for the tack room i need two solarium dividers which will kind of act as two spaces where people can actually tie up their horse and one area is going to have a solarium and then i need um and then i would like to almost like upgrade my stables as such so that they look a little bit opulent so in the majestic range, which is the top of the range, you've got collars and um, like brass um, finial balls, so they look really opulent, and they are an extra four and a half thousand pounds. Okay, now if I'd gone for one finial ball on every single stable, um, uh, I don't know what you call it, like pole, basically. Um, I'm looking at like six or seven grand. No, actually it'd be double, it'd be like eight grand, okay. And there was a significant difference between the top of the range and the next range down, it was like 15 grand. If it had been four grand, I would have just gone, do you know what, Dad, it's four grand. It's, that's nothing, I, I can just make that up. But it was a significant difference, it was like 15 grand. So what I said to Dad is, why don't I buy the balls and, and the finials, the finial balls and the collars um, for them to sit on? But what we'll do instead of we buy instead of buying one for like four for each stable, we buy two and they just go on the like actual stable doors. So either side of the stable door. 
So you have a bit of opulence and wow factor, but it hasn't cost, you know, however much it would have been for going top of the range. Um, so I bought them. I have like bought the sable, um, the tack room door, the feed room door and the Salarian dividers. And then what I did say to him, and this is the whole saving money thing, is like the windows, because we're having windows in all of the stables. So every 12 foot that you see outside the barn, you've got a window. And um, they're like 16,000, you know, windows. They're really expensive. But I didn't just want to get like the boarded ones. I wanted them so that they were letting in light, natural light. <clears throat> um. So I said to Dad, look, let's not get them from Monarch. I mean, I found another company in the States that I think is called um, American Stalls or something like that. And they do pretty much exactly the same ones. But it means that we don't have to outlay this cost right this minute because windows can literally go in last minute. They can go in like I can have people moving into the barn and they're still being installed. It's not, you know, that's not an issue. So he was like, yeah, OK, that's, you know, that's a good idea. That kind of sort of saves us sort of now. Um, but it is so stressful. So stressful. I mean, I have a lot of people saying, oh, I bet you're really excited. But you know what? This thing has been going on for so long. I'm just, I'm so sick of it, <laughs> almost. And, you know, I'm so sick of changing things and trying to find cost breaks and this and cost breaks and that and I, I do 100% get that it's expensive but it's driving my me nuts okay that is that one and then this one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Five one eight. Oh, I just need to try and dig out this. Thanks, five one eight. But that is definitely not five one eight, is it? So, what colour is that one then? It looks like that one. So, what is that? Three seven six six. Three seven six six. Mm. Okay, so that is in the wrong place. This, guys, is the reason why I always, always double check my threads, so you don't end up picking up the wrong thread. Because there are times, like this one, that I parked parked my thread in the wrong place. Sorry, I've got no needle minder, so I've got my needle in my mouth. Mm. That is definitely 3766, isn't it? Let me just double, double, double check that. Yeah. So, let's take that out of there. And move that there. Right. So, that is to go. Yeah, and that needs to go there. I'm looking forward to um, the RV though. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to be able to put my stamp on it. I'm looking forward to be able to, um, you know, buy. Um, my kitchen stuff and not have to worry about someone stealing it because I live in a house share and it's so difficult when you live in a house share in fact um I lived with someone for a while and he did end up moving out but do you know what he did I I always I always used to buy nice stuff so nice pots and pans nice cutlery nice plates and when he moved out, he moved out whilst I was at work and he emptied my cupboards of all of my stuff. And I have no idea where the guy lives at all. Like, I just haven't got a clue. Um, 
So I lost all of my nice pots and pans, all of my nice baking stuff, all of my nice cutlery, um, my nice crockery. Um, <clears throat> what else did he take? Things like uh, utensils, so like potato peelers, uh, mashes. Um, <clears throat> he took my scales for baking as well. He just literally emptied the kitchen of my stuff. And... Oh, is it the right place? Oh, my days. I literally am so lost with this. What are you doing, woman? Hang on one second. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, right, so the only thing I've done is put that in the wrong place. Um yeah, so whilst I was at work, he emptied like my cupboards of all of the stuff I own. And I had to basically oh, why are you doing that? I knew and now oh, I've just put that in there and that's not oh there we are <clears throat> and that really annoyed me really really annoyed me and I think what I'm really looking forward to is having my own space and not having to worry about someone else taking my stuff whilst I'm not there or using it while I'm not I mean the other thing as well is that he used to use my stuff and then I think that's what I was trying to do um, and then just leave it in the sink and not even wash it up so one thing I am going to make sure I've got in this new place is a dishwasher I am so desperate for a dishwasher like I can't even tell you I just I have no words of how desperate I am for a dishwasher um, it does mean that this Christmas I'm going to be spending Christmas on my own that's really sad isn't it because I won't have anyone in the States unless one of my you know, lovely members of staff invites me to theirs for Christmas. I don't know. <laughs> Not going to invite myself, but, um, you know, is what it is. No pain, no gain. Uh, the year after, though, will be my year. So by then we'll have the house built and then I'll have all of my family coming over to spend Christmas with me. Um, if I'm on my own, I might find that dad comes over for Christmas, but I don't know, you know, because he's got his wife so she she'll then have to spend christmas on her own so that's kind of not really fair um but you know it would be nice to spend christmas with my dad because i haven't spent christmas with him for about five years actually none of us have you know he she's had him every single year and it would actually be nice to spend christmas with him so that is the plans for 2023 a big christmas at home but yeah, I'm just looking forward to going. I'll tell you what I'm really looking forward to. And this is really, really sad. And um, only Americans will get this. Um, I can't wait to go to Target <laughs> and completely do out my kitchen with like Tupperware and, and like organise like things and um, buy spice jars and jars for my flour and all my baking stuff. And I can get pretty much most of my cooking stuff from there um i am just looking forward it's almost like doing an ikea run i mean we'll probably do one of those as well but just don't tell anyone um but i can't wait to go and have my fill in target we don't have a target here um do we have something similar yeah we do have something similar it's called b&m or home bargains um <laughs> i love target i just love target so I'm really super, really, really super excited about taking my dad to Target and then like us being able to get the stuff for the house. Um, that's really exciting. So, you know, we'll, we'll have probably, because I'm what I'm going to planning on doing is ripping out all the RV furniture and having separate sofas. So two, one of the sofas will be like a, a sleeper sofa so that they'll have, I'll have my room in the RV and then there will be a spare area like a spare bed that we can um that you know we can have for a sleeper sofa and then I would like a chair with an ottoman 
like a like a sofa chair, like a small one, not like a love seat, a bit smaller than a love seat. Um, I don't know what you call them, and um, that's going to be my stitchy area. <laughs> I'm so excited! And I'm going to have like a bookshelf next to it where I've got my books. I'm going to have like one of those big lights that shines up from from overhead, so I've got really good light. And um, yeah, so the RV thing is really exciting. I'm going to have lino across all the floors just because it's so easy and I all I need to do is just um sweep it because I'll, I'll probably have muddy even though I won't bring my, my my boots in I'm sure there'll be times where like I'm running late and I need to grab something so I'll just run into the RV grab something and then leave loads of mud in there um and then I've got my steam mop that I can just mop so just anything is ease ease for me I would like to have some nice area rugs um so I mean, obviously the space is very limited, but I would like to have like a, a relatively small rug in the seating area. Um, I have also looked at, and this is a really crazy idea, but I've actually also looked at an electric log fire. Um, so that is really cosy. I'm looking forward to having one of those. And then just, you know, having throw cushions and throws and um, I can get back into my a crochet because I um, used to crochet a lot but actually stitching has taken up my time because I'd rather stitch than crochet but you know there could be times that I can actually crochet in the evening instead of stitch and you know I can sit down with a film with my dad and I can be crocheting a throw or something you know it's just exciting but I'm so looking forward to be just working with horses again just being out up at six o'clock in the morning just out on the yard don't have to drive anywhere, don't have to sit in traffic, I don't have idiots beeping me because I, well, so I was on my way home the other day and I had, um, there was, I, there was like temporary traffic lights because they'd, they'd be doing roadworks and actually where you, um, so where the traffic lights are, you can get one car out like in front of the traffic lights and then you have another road, so there's like a road off to the left so really, if you are not behind that car, you need to be sort of, at, you know, um, behind where the other road starts so that people that are coming in the opposite, opposite direction can actually turn right. We're on the other side of the road. So people coming from the other direction, if they want to turn right down that road, they can because you're not blocking the road. So I was I was kind of uh, there was a car in front of me, which was by the traffic light. And then I was the other side of the road. So there was enough space for cars in the other direction to turn right. And um, there was, I think there must have been about four or five cars all at the same time decided they were going to turn right. And by then, the traffic lights had kind of switched to green. Um, and then by the time these cars had gone through, um, they would kind of gone to red again. And the guy behind me, whilst it was green, whilst the traffic lights, was like literally on his horn. And I was thinking, what do you want me to do, mate? Just drive in front of these guys, like just smash their cars in just so I can, you know, go through a green light. I can't do that. Like... They were all turning right and they were turning right. They weren't even waiting. They were just going. So I, I couldn't do anything. And he was just really arsy. And he um he was just like, beep, beep, beep. I'm like, oh my God, mate. Literally keep your Tampax in. There's nothing I can do. I can't, do you know what I mean? They're, they're going anyway. So I cannot do anything. The traffic lights are taking like a minute. Just chill out. Oh God, road rage. Drives me nuts. So I was in a real um, flowery mood when I got home. Just so, I just feel exhausted when I get home, you know. They've got roadworks down the main road that I knew where I work. And they have been there ever since I've started work there. And I've never ever gone down that road and it's been clear of traffic. And then they decided that they were in the other direction. They were going to shut the road. So basically anyone and everyone now comes down that main road. And because they are doing, I think they're putting in utilities. Um, there's road closures on the right hand side of the lane, there's road closures on the left hand side of the road, so there's uh, traffic lights, and it's just carnage now. Uh, you know, I can just be sat on that road for 20 minutes, and it's just demoralizing. I hate being sat in traffic. I haven't even got a radio in my car because it doesn't work, so, oh, I just feel like rubbish. And I, I feel like I have just chatted crap since I've been on this video, I'm really sorry. I bet you were, I bet you're glad that you uh, stepped foot in this video, aren't you? Wow. 
didn't think I could actually talk so much. But I've got a lot to say. I've got a lot going on. Um, you know, I've got a new life. <clears throat> new life to start, a new life to live. A new country that I absolutely adore. I've been to the States loads of times. And I've got, you know, it's almost a States family over there. Lots of friends that I'm looking forward to getting back in contact with. I'm looking forward to making friends. I'm looking forward to, you know, making relationships. I'm looking forward to a new relationship. That'd be quite nice. Um, you know, if it was a farrier or a builder, it'd be even better. <laughs> or a vet. Well, that'd be even better, wouldn't it? A vet. Gosh, if I married a vet, I'd be set for life. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not really a marrying type of person, so, um, see how it goes. But, you know, there might be someone out there who rocks my world. You never can tell. But, you know, until then, the evenings are stitching, reading, crocheting, spending time with my kitty cats. You know, that for me, that's perfect. That's just like a perfect life for me. And having my horses on my land. You know. Having my horse literally on tap. Like, oh, that's just perfect for me. I cannot wait. And, you know, these few months are flying by, which is amazing. But sometimes I feel like it's going too fast. Like, I'm getting a bit uh, scared because it's going too fast. But it's all good. It's all good in the hood. Right, let's get rid of that. Okay, let's go to this one here. Um, right, well, I didn't actually, I haven't got anything piled. So is this going to be a guessing game then? Holes. So it's going to be a... So that's 3820. That does not look like 3820 to me. It looks more like... It does actually look more like 445. Um, have I got 445 here? Or... 677. What's that? 4... That's not... Oops! It's definitely not that one. Not oh, that looks way greener. That looks yellow, and then that looks green. Um, okay, green, green, green. Nope, greener still. And um, okay, what about this one? Seven seven two. Hmm. Yeah, that looks like 772, so let's have a look at it. That's 772. Okay. Brilliant. So that's been parked in completely the wrong place, so... And that's miles away. So let's get rid of that. I'll sort that out later. Right, let's go for this one. Um, that's quite far up, isn't it? Oh, is that the same colour as that? 772 Oh my god, it's 19.40. How long have I been on this video? Oh gosh, one hour and 20 minutes. Right, well... I will probably just do this one and then I will leave you to it because uh, I could be stitching all night otherwise. Well, I will be stitching all night, but <laughs> I think what I'm going to do after doing this is I am going to make a cup of tea. In fact, I made a cup of tea. It, it sat to the right of me. However, I can't move. I feel like I'm wedged behind this project. So it's just been there and it's just getting cold. <clears throat> um, 
So I think I'm going to put something on my laptop. I'm going to have a cup of tea. And then I am going to make dinner, which takes about, it takes honestly as quick as it takes for the rice to cook, which is great. Um, oh, that's not great. Where is, hang on. I'm so lost. Um, okay, that's fine. All I ha okay, all I've done is I've not marked that off. So it just goes there. So when I start my threads, as you can see, well, not that you can see because I'm actually doing the park threads, but I when I start them, I actually do the um, loop method, and then ordinarily I would. Then, when I finished, run my threads down the back of my other threads, but because um, I don't want to be switching this over constantly, I decided that I would just do, well, it's not even a pin stitch, it's just a, I will get rid of these threads when I stitch over them in that vicinity, and they're all uh, anchored. Right, okay, so that one's blue, so that one goes there. I'm waiting for some threads for my crossword, so the colour I'm doing that in is 29, which is like a dark aubergine colour, and uh, 3041 I think it is, is it, or 3042, it's a darker one of those colours, um, and it will be absolutely gorgeous when it's done and I'm doing it on like a pearl grey fabric of 32 counts um, Lugana so I'm really excited about starting that I love doing new starts I think I'm a perpetual new starter because I am exactly the same thing with books as well I love starting books but then I don't really sit and finish them but I think that's why audiobooks work for, work for me because I can just sit and listen to them. And the thing with me, I find that I love reading, but it makes me so tired. I don't know why. It just sends me to sleep. I think it's because reading it for me has always been a, it's what I do before I go to sleep. So for, for me, psychologically, I think I've got in my head that I need to sleep. So I'll get past the page and then I'll be out of it. Which is not ideal, really. Okay, so and put that there. This is a very, very, very sharp needle and I, I tend to find them a bit easier to work with than the roll, is it the roll ball ones? The roller ones? I just find that my needle goes in so much easily, so much more easier, can't even talk. When, um, because I can feel, you know, I, I'm not really worried about going up in a hole that's not the hole because I can feel with regards to how much tension there is, whether I've got the hole or not. So it's not too bad. So I've done 416 stitches so far. That's good. It's good. Right, so then I'm gonna go. Right, so I'm gonna leave it there, guys, because what I'm gonna do is, because that's quite far away from up there, I'm gonna turn it over and then I'm gonna run this behind my already stitched area and I will hope to get this up tonight it won't actually take much editing great thing with stitch with me is I don't have to edit anything um, so I hope you have a lovely rest of the evening or the day or whatever the day the time of the day is that um, you're watching this and you get to enjoy your stitching as much as I do so until next time have a fantastic day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.